Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at the orbit and the motions of Mars. Well, it turns out that there's a lot of things going on with every planet in the solar system, including Mars. And so let's take a closer look. Well, first of all, the orbit of Mars is very eccentric. Well, not in the case that it's kind of crazy or strange, but the eccentricity of the orbit is very unusual compared to the other planets. It has a very high eccentricity. In other words, at perihelion, the planet Mars is much closer to the Sun than at aphelion. Of course, that's the case for every planet, but not to the extent that it is for Mars. The eccentricity, and I guess I didn't put it on there, it's about 0.093. So what that means is that it is about 9.3% closer to the Sun at perihelion and about 9.3% farther away at aphelion. Now, of course, that's not exactly the conversion, but close enough. Let's just call it 10%. So it's much closer at perihelion, much farther away at aphelion. And if you take a look at these numbers right here in astronomical units, the average distance to the sun is a little bit over 1.5 astronomical units. So it's about 50% farther away from the sun than the Earth. But at maximum, it's 1.666. Oh, that's her dog barking at her cat. At maximum distance, it is 1.666 astronomical units away, and at minimum distance, 1.381. So you see an enormous difference, much, much greater than it is for the Earth. Also, the orbit is tilted relative to the ecliptic. Now, that's the case for every planet in the solar system. But in the case of Mars, it's about 1.85 degrees tilted away from the ecliptic. Remember, the ecliptic is the plane made by the orbit's trip around the sun. So that's considered the ecliptic of the solar system. And Mars is angled almost two degrees of that ecliptic. And then there's an actual tilt. It turns out that the actual tilt for Mars is very close to the actual tilt of the Earth. The Earth is tilted at about 23 and a half degrees. For Mars, it's a little bit more, 25.19 degrees, which means that the severity of the winter and the summer is a little bit greater on Mars than it is on Earth, because winters and summers, or the seasons, depending upon the tilt, the actual tilt of the planet relative to the orbit. And so in this case, for Mars, that's about 25.19 degrees. But then it doesn't always stay that way. It turns out that things change over time. So what are some of the things that change over time? Well, first of all, the obliquity cycle. Well, what does that mean? It means that the angle, the actual tilt, changes over time. And on Mars, the, the change is absolutely phenomenal. It changes anywhere from about zero to 60 degrees. So sometimes the tilt is virtually non-existent. At other times, the tilt may be as much as 60 degrees. The exact numbers we're not exactly sure of, but we know that it's about in that range. That happens over a period of about 124,000 years. So the, the tilt of Mars will continue to change between those numbers. The reason why it's so much more severe on Mars compared to the Earth, notice the Earth varies from 21 and to 24 and a half degrees, currently about 23 and a half degrees over a period of 41,000 years. But the reason why it's so different on Mars is because Mars doesn't have a big moon like the Earth to stabilize the planet. And so there's a lot more variation in that actual tilt. Then what we have what we call the precession. It turns out the planet okay, rotates on its axis about every 24 and a half Earth hours, about 24 hours and 30 some minutes. And because of that, it acts like a spinning top. And all spinning tops tend to precess around like this. So as the planet turns around, the actual tilt makes little circles. So essentially, the actual tilt will go around in circles like that. It does that for the Earth as well as for Mars. Well, on Mars, it does so once every 175,000 years. For the Earth, it's one every 26,000 years. And yes, those motions have tremendous effect on the climate. Then we have what we call the apsidal precession, also known as the aphelion precession. Remember, aphelion is the point where the planet is the farthest away from the Sun in its eccentricity. And so therefore, we can see that that point where that feeling occurs tends to turn around. So this whole position of where the perihelion is versus aphelion that changes around, goes around like this, and it does so 
over a period of 83,600 years on Mars versus 112,000 years for the Earth. So it's the same thing happens on the Earth as well. And then we have what we call the eccentricity cycles, also on the Earth known as the Milankovitch cycles. Milankovitch was a Serbian mathematician, physicist, scientist, who began to realize that the eccentricity of the Earth's, Earth's orbit was changing in about 100,000 year cycles. Well, Mars does the same thing. Mars becomes less, the orbit becomes, has a lower eccentricity and a greater eccentricity, and it goes back and forth and back and forth over a period of 96,000 years, which is almost the same as it is for the Earth, 100,000 years. Again, these cycles, the Milinkovitch cycles as we call them, are probably the reason why we have those ice age periods, where we have warm periods and cold periods in the climate, probably primarily due to the fact that the eccentricity changes over a, a range both for the Earth and for Mars. So the same kind of climatic changes can be expected on Mars as well. And we'll look into that a little bit more to see how that changes the way the polar caps uh, act in Mars as they do on the Earth. But at least this way you can see that there's a lot to the orbit and to the tilt of Mars. It's not a constant thing. It's not because what it is today will be that way tomorrow for Mars. It's constantly changing. Every aspect of the motion of Mars is on a constant cyclical cycle and changes from year to year, from century to century, and from millennium to millennium. And you can see the periods as compared to the Earth in all those various motions that Mars has in its orbit around the Sun. And that is how it is. Good.